Raven Simone. Now, let's get things started. to calm down. Yeah. That was awesome. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Do we want them to calm down, though? I don't know if we want you guys to calm down. You're an amazing audience. <laughs> and here's how amazing you are. Raven, you want to say hi to somebody. OK, so when I moved here to New York, there was this boy who kept coming to the front of the building. They're like, there's this boy downstairs, and he's missing. I'm not gonna put you on blast like that. He's here early in the morning. I'm like, doesn't he have school? Anyway, so he's like, yeah, I can't make it yet because I'm not old enough. You have to be a certain age to sit in the audience and- To come to the view. To come to the view, you're right. And my boo thing, Stephen, is here today because he turned 16. First Yay. of all, happy birthday. Is this right here? This is my boo thing right here. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you for coming. My mom doesn't even have this mug, so here you oh, go. Happy thank birthday. You to finally be here in the audience. It feels really good. I mean, I enjoy a side, but inside's pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't sell that mug, OK? We, want, we don't want to find it on eBay. <laughs> or if you do, give us half the profits, OK? <laughs> oh, we weren't supposed to sell them? <laughs> too late. OK, <laughs> okay I'm, I, I don't know what happened. Anyway, you know, the protest of the national anthem continues. The U.S. soccer organization had harsh words for player Megan Rapinoe, who's been kneeling during the anthem. They say Megan is expected to stand because she's representing her country. And she responded that she's representing her country by not standing. Now, you know, it is, there is no law. There is no federal mandate. No. There is no mandate saying that you ever have to stand or sit or lay down for the anthem. It is left to you to make your connection. And it, the protest, I mean, is going on and on, and it's, it's moving in other directions. But what do you think of this? Uh, well, well, first and foremost, she said, it, Megan Rapino is, is a member of the U.S. Women's National Team. She said she's ready to face the consequences. Mm -hmm. And I spoke with U.S. Soccer this morning, and, and they said one of those ramifications could be she might not be selected to play on the national team because Coach Jill Ellis might not want this to be a distraction. She could also protest and say, you know what, I don't want to be on the national team. But this story has evolved. The Colin Kaepernick situation bothered me when he sat. I don't, I, I actually appreciate the Seattle, just a second, the Seattle Seahawks, they, they stood, they had interlocked arms, one player was raising his fist. Even kneeling, I don't mind, but it was the sitting that I felt was a little disrespectful. Why? What's the difference if they're sitting or kneeling? Sitting is different. Kneeling is still a sign um, of paying homage and honor. You know, you kneel in church, that sort of I, thing. I find it interesting. You teach us our rights. Mm -hmm. You teach it to us. We know what we can and cannot do. And then when we exercise right. it, it's a big ordeal. Mm -hmm. that, it's her right to do that. No, it is her right. It is her right. I think the, the major thing that... Right. The thing that I've noticed most, like I had, I didn't know how I was going to react at first, and my, my opinion has evolved a little bit. The thing I love is it's peaceful. Yeah. Too often in our history, we find times where sure. we had to fight and people were going at each other. If you want to gently do this to make a statement, we have to, we should all applaud that it's peaceful. Yeah. That's all. I'll applaud you know, like that's, yeah. that's important. Well, and, and you make a great point in terms of children because the protests have started showing up in classrooms as well. A California teacher lowered students' grades for refusing to stand during the Pledge of Allegiance. One of these students happens to be a Native American kid who actually, if anybody has a right to bitch, yeah. anybody. That's true. And she's been doing this for probably seven years. She's been, this has been her, this has been her way of saying, listen, so why it now? isn't, all, but because they're she's, noticing no, she's, she's been, been they're noticing. noticing. Oh, they're noticing it But now. she's been doing it for the past seven years because for her as a Native mm -hmm. American, you know, that pledge, doesn't Let's represent break down the pledge. Let's break down the yeah. pledge, right? I pledge allegiance to the flag of Why? the United States of America mm -hmm. and to the republic for yeah. which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, is liberty and justice for all. So my question is, what's a republic? What are you talking about when you say republic? Because I just learned it. I don't know what it means. The republic means we pledge loyalty to our government, which the republic is where people choose others to make laws for them. But the government is biased. It's majority men. You don't have enough women representing it. You don't have enough other nationalities representing it. So it's biased to begin with. And but in, it's the best we can come up with in right 19, now. Come, that was back it's in the day. Right. 
it's still, still, still better democracy. than most. In 1943, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled against making the pledge mandatory. It's been that way for 60 years. The teacher should be in trouble because, put, again, she's exercising her right to do what she wants. This is America. But, you know, before certain, I don't know, when did, um, when did under God go in? I believe it wasn't always there. It wasn't always there. A lot of people don't, don't believe in God. They have to say it anyway. So there's a lot in there that's loaded. Well, you don't have to say it. it is your, you don't have to. You don't have to. I mean, they took, you know, when we grew up, you had to do it. It was mandatory. Everybody had to stand up and anyway. But they don't do that in, in every school every day well, anymore. What would have happened to you growing up had you decided not to say it? Oh, we probably. I, I would have been, we would have been vilified. They they, the teachers would have been upset. They probably would have spoken. My mother would have been upset. Everybody would have been upset. You know, but then, you know, in my case, I look at these, looked at those young athletes who spent all their time working to make America proud, mm -hmm. had stood there like this, and were vilified for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I look and see there are other athletes more recently who have lied and just, you know, I mean, I'm okay with you not standing yeah. if you're not lying about stuff so, and making yeah. America and look, and Americans look, 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 bad. look bad. How old is she, this bad. girl? She's... <laughs> I I forgot. She's in high school. She's, high school, and yeah. she's been doing it for years. I think yeah. the other thing that's really notable here is that she cares enough to be involved and, and stand down and make a well, statement. We talk about kids yes. yes. that are apathetic, that don't use their right. As the vote comes yes. to them at 18, they maybe don't use that. Mm -hmm. It's good this to have someone that be, cares. She'll be, she'll be and, both. It seems yeah. like it's trending, so people are going to be doing it. And I think, too, you know, you raise an important point about Native Americans, and, you know, still we are still call the football team in our nation's capital, the, the Washington Redskins, and for the Native American community, the Redskin, that term, that connotation is the most offensive way that you can describe somebody of Native American descent. Well, well half our and, and, you know, and, we have a history of slavery in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have to acknowledge that. There's real... Did you learn about it when you were in school? They never mentioned slavery to me. Oh, never? We learned it. No, I never was learned in the South. We learned it. about the Underground Railroad. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I learned, learned nothing. Real quick. They taught me nothing. Just like, you know, I mean, they, they taught us nothing about the Holocaust or slavery. Well, here's I what kid. I can tell you about slavery. I learned all about it by myself. People get very upset when you talk about slavery. Why? And they say, well, why is this so? Why are black people always saying it's so hard to catch up? Well, because we weren't able to do any of the things that. Uh, white Irish people coming over yeah. to this country, uh, immigrants coming over. We had no rights, so we couldn't own, you know, stock in the railroad. Right. So we couldn't have, you know, three or four generations of millionaires. We didn't. We weren't allowed to have any of that. So we're playing catch up, and we're playing catch up all the time. And when you, know, and when you, and when you don't realize that for. <coughs> 98% of the time that we have been in America, we have not been human beings. Mm -hmm. We have not been considered human beings. So when you don't, when you get, when a kid says there's an issue, or somebody says my grandfather fought in World War II, came back to America and couldn't vote, and he's pissed off. You have to understand, this is going, it's going to be a long time to get it done, but you need to know the history, you've got to know the history, the to know why the people school. are angry, whether they're Native American or Black. I mean, it's important. you got to pay Attention. And we want to congratulate, speaking of black folks, <laughs> Dr. Carla Hayden, sworn in as the first black woman to lead the Library of Congress. <laughs> I think, is she the first woman? Is she the first woman? And she's the first woman and the first black woman to lead the Library of Congress. Things are happening, they happen slowly, but when they do happen, we're going to tell you about it. We'll be right back. <laughs> Coming up, Donald's latest birther bombshell. Whether this will be his last words on where President Obama was really born. So let me add a fun fact. Research claims that the average length of sex is seven and a half minutes. <laughs> it takes me that long to get my shirt off. I'm signing off for 45 minutes at least. 45 minutes! Oh my God, I'm exhausted thinking about what you do at night. <laughs> Make time for the view next week on ABC. We always got to bring him up. So we might as well tell you he's doing a press conference, Donald Trump. Uh, and he's expected to address his persistent questioning of whether President Obama was born in the U.S. A stance he's been holding on to since he was here back in 2011. Take a look. What? You show his birth certificate. I, I think he probably... He to? Because I have to and everybody else has to. Whoop I want him to show his why? birth certificate. Why? There's something okay, on that birth not, certificate that he doesn't like. Oh, my God. Oh, that's okay. When you become a president, oh, it's not the same. You 
sorry. I learned in school Hawaii is part of America. Yeah. I, I'm calling me crazy. You know what? Maybe maybe Donald doesn't know Hawaii. You know what? Maybe he doesn't know it's a state. Maybe that could be it. Maybe he doesn't trust the government. I'm sorry. Isn't the government smart enough to know who's from America and who isn't? They hired him. We hired him for two terms. We know he's American. They're not going to let anybody run. He they has, can't win. He has never said this about anybody else. No. Just the first Ever. black president. Let's yes. call it what it is. Uh, you know. But I mean, but it, 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 what doesn't make any sense to me is geography says it's a fact. Hawaii's been part. Beth Midler is Hawaiian. Okay? Does yeah. that mean she's not American? What the heck? So I, he made me crazy. But he why makes everybody crazy about it. Because he is. I guess they think because we keep they, talking listen, about they keep talking about. But apparently, this is what happened. Okay. I'm over it. His people said, "Oh, he believes it now. He hasn't said it," which leads me to believe, well. You're just trying to pad this so you can move on. Well, wait, he's saying that he, he's he hasn't said he's Jack. supposedly giving some kind of a speech at this time. Yeah. And he wants to keep the suspense going as if it's a reality show. This is a very wait, important thing. This up thing you know, doing. I, I understand the health records and I understand the tax returns. Is there a point where everyone says, okay, here's my birth certificate, here's yours? Like, why did it ever. Why he's already he can't president. Be the president so if he's you're a not racist. Right. If we know he is. Yeah. If, if we know he is, why? Where he's, was. He's a racist, Sarah. That's why. That's it. <laughs> no, I, Why is it still? Oh, he's okay. He could be, yeah, be whatever he, he wants to. But here's my situation. He's already president. And Obama's president saying back. back. He is. He's saying, see you later. Back. Because Donald <laughs> does not. Ha he doesn't have any. Listen, he's at the end of his bag of tricks. So he's now going back and starting at the beginning again. He's but, at the end of his back. Can, can I just refute one yeah. thing, too? And I yeah. think uh, the thing that was killing me is a lot of people, and of course, they sent this press release out <laughs> saying that the campaign believes that Trump says that he's born in the U.S. now, and then they've got this big press conference today. Yeah. But but here's the thing. like, it, it didn't start from the Clinton campaign. Can we just shoot that down yeah, right no, now? It, no, it no. did not. He first, started it. He oh, and sorry, other people. He, 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 per, he perpetuated yeah. it. Hillary, yeah. it, it's, it did originate in the 2008 race, which was very contentious between said. Obama and Hillary. But her campaign, she had nothing to do with it and allegedly if you go to politifact they'll tell you the whole yeah. story it no, started with a supporter Donald. with a yeah. clinton supporter but not anyone but this, from the clinton but anyway, at this point correct. it doesn't matter because he's gone he's, 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 but it, I no matter what it doesn't change the fact listen i know that you probably don't know people who have a, a white mother or a black father whatever you've never met folks like this i'm assuming <laughs> but the bottom line is there are lots of you know integrated couples mm -hmm. who have had babies and they were born here too <laughs> So it's gone. He's gone. The, the question is, why is he now? Why is this being brought up by the campaign? Again. Because he knows. Well, he knows that he cannot get the he cannot get the African American vote. This vote. is his That's way of adding to Donald. his. Yes. He thinks it might help. Why? We still like him. We still like Obama. Sorry. without the black vote, the Latino vote, and the women's vote. Yes, so he keeps making up stuff no. as he goes along. The campaign tells him, come on, get on board. Kellyanne Conway says, you got to get the little bit of the black vote. Say something. Kellyanne is coming here next week. We'll ask her so about we'll it. Ask, we'll ask her some more questions. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what it's about. But yeah. there are also reports that when Donald appeared on the Dr. Oz show, some comments that were made after, you know, after he kissed his daughter Ivanka were edited out because Dr. Oz allegedly said, it's nice to see a father kiss his daughter. And Trump allegedly responded, I'll kiss her as often as I can. Now, why would anybody think they should cut that out? Right. He's just a proud father lusting after his daughter. <laughs> so why would you cut that out? It's such a lovely moment. I Listen, I kiss my dad on the lips. There, there's no like open mouth or anything, but I kiss him on the lips. We're a very huggy, touchy family. Yeah. I just didn't want anyone to get the wrong idea there. But does um, your father have the history of I saying... I stand my dad's lap still, and I'm four, almost 41 years old. Okay, Is fine. that creepy? But does your, daughter have, your father have the history of saying, my daughter, I vodka? No, it's a base-by-base base okay. basis. We're not judging. It's okay, not creepy. Thank does you. your father have a history of saying things like, my daughter, Ivanka, she's six feet tall, and she's got the best body. If I weren't happily married, and you know, her father... I mean... <laughs> can I just... Can I just say something and this is listen we go right to that because of what he said in the past and that's what we want to that's what we automatically want to believe just don't go right to that every time i just don't i just well, feel some kind of way feeling it's not get. that creepy because some fathers well. don't hug their children at all and some fathers beat their children it's basically so what, what he says yeah. not what he does no it's what he says too we have a Everybody in the media has a turn to be like, oh, oh what you just say? That's what that means. No, I just eat grapes. I don't know how you're taking it. I just like I, eating grapes. I agree with, with you, Raven. Point. Point? Stop I, feeding into it more than it really is. Uh, yeah, because for my, those of us... Well, that's because he said it again on Dr. Oz. 
every time we turn around, he says something to this effect, and that gets us going again. That's what uh, happens. I'm just, Raven, I'm with you, though. I think we don't, we don't always have to go there. And for, for those that aren't super affectionate, my family is very, like, touchy-feely. We hug, we kiss, all of that. We're Lebanese, so we're always kissing everybody. It might feel foreign, and might, some people might think it's strange. I do want to mention that we did reach out to the Dr. Oz show and, about why they omitted that, and mm -hmm. we haven't heard oh, back, on. so. Maybe he said a bad word. No, Maybe he did. <laughs> maybe, maybe he said. Take it out. Why would maybe they, they take said, it out? Maybe or over time. Maybe he said that. I don't know. <laughs> if a Jimmy Carter... See, people automatically thought... No, no. See how that happens? It happens all time? You know, it could be anything. And remember, you know, there are lots of accusations that get thrown around. Mm -hmm. There's lots of them. And we he does want, most of them. Well, but lots of, lots of people do them. Do I? Lots of people do them. Yeah, well, the, you know? in this particular but, period but, we're in. But we in. find a lot of people, you know, case by case basis. Mm -hmm. You want to really sort of make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. You know what I mean? I, I agree. We'll be right back. So yesterday, yesterday, yesterday in Hot Topics, we talked about the New Jersey school teacher who taught his male students a little lesson about what it means to be a woman in America. Take a look. All girls. Get a 21% discount on all school-related items. Uh, those in favor, please raise your hands. Okay. Those against? Boys, must give girls a two-minute head start between class periods. Please raise your hands. Girls, girls, girls. All right. Those against? I feel like the woman in Congress built how I felt. Kind of unfair because it was only like six of us guys against 20-some girls. So I felt kind of unmatched. So I love that. It's one of the best. It's one of the best experiments ever. And that teacher has also been listed as one of the most influential educators in America. And then there's, like, he's, you know, also hot for People Magazine. They love him, too. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't want to object to because he's, no. yeah, hold on, hold on. Just rest up, rest up. It'll he's an amazing he's really educator. Good. He's an amazing educator, and he's here right now. Give it up for Nicholas Ferroni. Hey, Nicholas. You did, what, what made you decide that this is what you had to do for these students? Why did you do it like this? Well, we all know, obviously, experience is the best way to learn. And as an educator teaching history, I try to put them in those situations. Uh, there was a famous experiment, Jane Elliott's Brown Eyes, Blue Eyes experiment. Yep. Mm -hmm. When I saw that in college, I said, if I become a teacher every week, I'm going to do a social experiment with my students. Amazing. So this one uh, next to me is one of my students, Michaela Bland. Hey. She Hi, Michaela. <laughs> and she founded our school's first feminist club. So we were talking yes. about different ways to teach boys true feminism. Right. And I, I thought the best way is to flip the script on them a little bit. Love and it. And we picked six of the biggest, toughest football uh, players in school. <laughs> and But they got it. We rarely experience things until we we walk in other people's shoes. What other topics have you done the social experiment with? I do a great one. I don't want to give it away because I'll be doing it in like two weeks. But right. I do a great one where I have them make a list of grievances against the school, <laughs> like the Declaration of Independence. Again, by signing it, it's treason. You know, how many of us say things, but we won't attach our name to it? And then I have my principal come yeah. down and basically say, basically say, you're going to get suspended. I'm going to kick you out of school. And then we see who keeps their name on the list and off the list. Wow. And I want to yeah. congratulate great. him for teaching LGBT history as well. Yes. Thank you very yes. much. You know what? As long as, as long as there are teachers like you handling our kids, I feel a lot better. But there are. I mean, I teach with so many amazing, and I'm not one of the best. Well, that's what they yeah. told me, baby. They said you were. <laughs> I would have never, I would have never missed um, one of your. The thing is, you're yeah, part of the solution, and that's yeah, what's you great. That's the you're key. part uh -oh. of the solution. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so our thanks to Nicholas Ferroni and to his point to all those teachers who are making a difference, a real right. difference in kids' lives. We'll be right back. <laughs> it's Sarah's birthday. So, welcome back. See, Sarah thinks we're about to do the view slide. <laughs> But not quite yet, Sarah. <laughs> we rehearsed. You just thought we were ignoring the fact that your birthday is on oh, Sunday. Hey. You yes. thought we forgot. We did not forget. We have a few surprises for you. Yep. Okay. First, we all saw how much you loved tap dancing a few weeks ago on the show. Do we get a tap? So we got yeah, Sarah. you. Look at you. We got you a pair of tap bedazzle <laughs> shoes. Oh. That's not all. 
Um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Sarah loves 80s music. Um, some of her teen idols, Debbie Gibson, Tiffany. New Kids on the Block? Um, yes, and KOTB, New Kids on the Block. So we had a special jean jacket, an 80s jean jacket made for you. Brian is also going, you have to put it on, Sarah. These are so back in. They are back in. This yes. is back in. One more um, surprise for you. One of your teen idols has a little message for you. So take a listen. Hey, Sarah, Debbie Gibson here. <clears throat> when you hear you're going to be on the view, you get dolled up, despite the fact that I've been trying to fight a flu and I've been on vocal rest, but I am breaking it for you because it's your special day and I just can't shake you down. Now, I know this birthday greeting comes. Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. Well, let's see where you're headed to on your vacation. 
You won a five-night, six-day trip for two with round-trip airfare to Playa del Carmen, Mexico, courtesy of Wyndham Rewards. The Viva Wyndham Maya, located on the spectacular shores of Riviera Maya, Mexico, is an unforgettable, all-inclusive resort featuring impeccable services and amenities, five on-site restaurants, nightly entertainment, and more. gets one and viewers at home need to visit our website by midnight eastern on sunday night to see how to enter for a chance to win monday's vacay yep. oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Well, you know what you know something my friends it isn't really a birthday party without some cake, cake? so a friend of sarah's has a special delivery for her right now come on out <gasps> special person <gasps> Tiffany, now this cake. Did you meet her? I watched you dance. I was by Were you singing? I was dancing with you. <laughs> oh just just Listen, you. While they're doing that, <laughs> we're going to be right back. We're going to be right back. Right. We're going to be right back. Let them keep going. What are you doing for your birthday? Because your actual birthday is Sunday. Sunday. Yes. Okay. So well, what do you do? We don't get to go to movies much because I have, we have a baby. So I asked if we could go see Bridget Jones and eat popcorn and just have a couple hours by ourselves. You're not gonna go see Breathe. Breathe. Um, don't breathe. Go see a scary oh, movie. No, no, no. 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 Go see. Don't. Why my husband won't go, go with me? I saw it. It was great. It's too fabulous. It's Bridget Jones is out. Like, Sorry. Okay. I don't, that's um, do you know me? Oh, no. Sarah, <laughs> it looks like somebody signed your jacket. What do you think about the performance? Oh, oh my gosh, Tiffany. We sing this every week. I'm, it's my go-to karaoke song. I, I have choreography. <laughs> I only showed a little bit. It was a teaser. Let's see the choreography. She has a tap shoes on. Oh, did you see the Thank running you. as fast as you can, holding on to one another, and try to get away. Did you know that that's a remake? Did you know that well, that's a remake yes, from a 60s yes, song? The 60s. Oh, that song. No, it's no, a no. great, no, it's a great remake, but I wondered if you she knew that. She was the first for me, but I did know yes. Paul McCartney was a Beatle, so. Oh, that's <laughs> you, know, you know that the View has a remake, too? You know, this is my first time actually talking about what you guys have been doing all week oh. long, which is The View Slide. Oh, let me. Yeah. 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 We're oh. still waiting to see yours. Check out our website to learn the moves, then upload your video and post it on social media with the hashtag ViewSlide, and we may feature it on the show. Take a look at some more of our famous friends and View fans putting on, you know, their get down with it. Go ahead. Let's go.